start the recording, so we can start. Um, welcome everyone to the free ITF 115 meeting. Uh, please be aware that this meeting is aligned with the node wells. Um, okay, this is our draft agenda. We are going to go through the overview of the IoT and research group in the ITF. Then we go through the new plan ITF activities. And if it's possible, we can have as well other IoT work like IoT Security Foundation. And then um, if we would like to have your opinion about if you need as well some kind of uh, interworking group coordination requirements uh, for any draft and review needed. Okay, some comments on the agenda. Okay. Uh, please add your name into the attendees list. Um, so uh, we we'll start with the working groups. So six stage is not active for now, uh, but it's open to uh, handle some open issues if uh, uh, if any. But there is no meetings so far as far as I know. So six low, Carles Sueta. Okay, seems that they are not present, but they have uh, gave some input. We will not read them. So next working group is Daniel Longanaden. Okay, Anima uh, Cheng Turles. Okay, ICF Michael Nicholas. Michael. I think you you are okay. Michael, it seems that this not uh, okay. Uh, Michael is not available or Nicholas. We have we have Michael in the call, oh. but I wonder ah. there we are. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I updated the wiki. ASDF did not meet since uh, ITF before ITF one one four. I get, and uh, I guess we're regrouping to deal with uh, people's uh, time pressure, and that's about it. Yeah, maybe it's worth adding that uh, uh, ASDF is, is a kind of a sister group to 1DM um, outside the IETF, and uh, 1DM is uh, uh, currently discussing where we are on the requirements uh, side. So, is there anything that still needs to be added uh, to the uh, current specification that we have, and this is uh, still uh, ongoing a little, so I expect something to get out of that in the IATF 115 time frame, but maybe not early enough for IATF 115 uh, itself. Okay, thank you very much, Karsten and Michael. Some other comment or questions? Okay. Uh, Sibor, Barry, Christian. Hi. Um, so Sibor is finishing up work on a couple of documents, Sibor packed and time tag documents. Uh, we're just looking at some work on uh, doing DNS queries over Sibor and getting ready to start a CDDL 2.0 work that uh, actually Karsten just, uh, just presented his initial crack at it. Uh, the last hour before this, okay. uh, we will be meeting at one fifteen on Thursday afternoon. Karsten, you have anything to add to that? No, thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Barry and Karsten. Uh, additional comment questions? Okay. Cor, Jaime, Marco, Karsten. Hi, this is Marco. Uh, so since last time we published one RFC 9254 used to be young Seabor, so it's one of the four core conf cluster documents and we got um, a proof of publication and now uh, almost published really uh, the problem with this document that was really uh, brought up and completed in record time during spring and summer. Uh, thinking about the working group documents, yeah, we have another core conf document uh, still in SG evaluation and one in Shepard write up during working group last call and during the summer we also adopted a new document uh, DNS uh, over co-op 
and we have also other uh, documents we've been focusing on uh, mostly uh, on href recently so the constraint resource identifier with a number of uh, regular design team meetings uh, a bunch of documents on group communication and some more related to um, OSCOR, especially uh, for the sake of uh, key update. And we'll meet at ITF 115 for two hours. Okay. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, further comment or questions? Okay. Uh, Kose, Matt, Ivano? Okay. Detnet, Low, Janos? Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi. I would focus on uh, what uh, has been changed uh, since uh, the last call. Uh, we touched upon the charter being updated, and actually it has been approved, uh, which uh, enables uh, for that net group uh, uh, to address new requirements, uh, including uh, the definition of uh, new queuing mechanisms, if and needed, and as much as uh, agreed by the group. And uh, uh, two other documents uh, I've also noted in the notes. The uh, OEM work has been progressing. The OEM framework uh, draft had uh, a closed, uh, concluded working group last call. Uh, and of course, we are moving on with the document. And we uh, started the working group last call on the MPLS OEM document. Uh, it's closing in, 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 a, in a week or so. Uh, so that's been progressing. And actually, there is a third one, the IP, uh, which is the next to get there, but uh, some more work is needed. And the last document I, I uh, thought to mention in the notes is uh, uh, an individual draft uh, collecting uh, uh, new requirements I mentioned related to the charter. This is being discussed on the list and uh, a sort of a high candidate for call for working group adoption in, in my view after the discussions uh, conclude. That's it in brief. Okay, thank you very much, Janos. Further comment or questions? Okay, IoT Ops. Maybe, yes. maybe one, one, one question on, on the uh, requirements draft. I and mean, that's not something that you might be asking for you know, wider review beyond the usual aspects of the group. Um, is that something, Janos, you think might be useful? I'm, I'm thinking like now in the context of IoT director to ask. Yeah, actually, that, thank you for asking, Arya, um, because that might be a good to take a look uh, for, for anyone, uh, seeing what, what are the requirements and if anyone one is interested in the use of that net and might have sort of other cases, applications in mind uh, that are still not addressed with the extended requirements of this coming document we are trying to build consensus on, either by the row work, which focuses on the wireless extension, then, then please uh, chime in and contribute. So the, the, the gist, I would say, for these new requirements is sort of having a bigger uh, networks, bigger administrative domains, like addressing issues of long cables, a um, uh, larger number of nodes, uh, and, and stuff like that. That's that's uh, mainly the drive so far, and it's it's coming from telecom environment, I would say. I think it's primarily uh, from the wide area network requirements and the yes. uh, problem that the TSM things were all designed against um, assumptions that uh, time synchronization, for example, is perfectly easy to do or that, uh, not in all cases, right, but a good, good degree of TSN and um, that uh, links are really perfectly well and have no jitter, um, very little loss. So all these things that really go out of the window when we go into metropolitan networks uh, with more than fiber, for example. Yeah, I would say nobody considered anything perfect but uh, of course everything has a limit yeah and uh, it's going beyond those limits some identified okay B -b very good thanks a lot for that so if that's good to make more visible across the whole iot area thanks
Thank you, Ari, and Channel Santerles. Uh, instead of IoT Ops, I will go a bit up and back to Anima. Turtles, if you want to give a feedback on Anima. I, I, I was thinking our secretary was uh, already <laughs> giving some, so, sorry, we had an IB workshop, so I was a little bit late. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's business as usual. So I think one of the main issues we have is uh, that uh, we would certainly be happy to to get more reviewers uh, from the IoT space. So maybe I should, as a chair, also try to, you know, ask the authors to reach out more to you know, maybe even the IoT directorate, because I think that's always good. We we, we got, of course, uh, when we specifically ask good uh, IoT um, directorate reviews. Um, no, um, I think there is nothing specific of note here. I think uh, the change of affiliation of, uh, of the co-chair from uh, Huawei to the university in Beijing, I think that might have happened before IETF 114. But I'm not sure if we reported that, so that gives a little bit more diversity. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else, Michael, that comes to mind for this group? No, not for me. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I, I, I'll, I'll try to find the time to 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 list the individual draft stuff. Uh, but I'll, I'll do that when I've done my chair slides. Then I can copy that data into the uh, IoT. Uh, uh, Wiki. Okay, thank you very much, Turles. Okay, so back to IoT Ops. Uh, Alexei Henk. Okay, Lake, Melissa, Stephen. Hi, this is Melissa. Hi. So, yeah, uh, on the Lake side, the main update we have is that ad hoc, the main chartered item of Lake, is now in working group last call. And the call will be running up until the ITF meeting until 4th of November. So please, uh, if you are interested in this work, please do comment. Uh, Lake, other than that, Lake will be meeting on the Tuesday of the ITF week. So that would be all on our side of it. Okay, thank you very much, Melissa. Further comment or questions? Okay, Elwick, Mohit, Sen. No. Okay, LP1, Alex, Pascal. Hello, Ines. Um, Hi, Pascal. Hello. Uh, for LP1, we have two documents which are really well progressed in the ISDQ. So the young data model is now in the RSC leader queue. And the uh, chic over NBIoT is well advanced. I mean, there are a number of reviews which are positive already. And we have issued a liaison statement to 3GPP because some of the use cases we cover are really uh, beyond the scope of the ATF. They belong to 3GPP, so it's going to be informational. But there, are, there is the end to end shake over at BIOT, over the non data basically path. And uh, for that, we can effectively be normative. So uh, our specification does that. And that's why we issued this liaison statement to the uh, 3GPP. Uh, apart from that, we are now working on uh, architecture points because we want to progress the architecture in terms of identifiers and how we can generalize Chic on media where the session between the Chic and points is not obviously a font based on the layer two. So on Loha, it's very obvious to know who are the, with who because you have a Chic device and a Chic application. But if you do it. Uh, over a uh, mesh, for instance, over IP, then you need to identify who is who, where are the endpoints, and what is the session between those endpoints. So we are looking uh, at identifiers, etc. So we are we are looking at the next steps in our architecture. The goal being to recharter for doing chic over non-LP1 types of networks in the future. And that's pretty much it, Ines, if we have questions. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Pascal. Hi, Pascal. Um, this is Samita. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, so you talked about the liaison statement uh, regarding NBIoT to 3GPP. Is it possible to share that with the IoT directorate? Oh, yes, certainly. It is actually published on the IETF site. Uh, so I have to okay. look it up and the copy, I guess, to the wiki. But if you just look, look up on the IETF data tracker, the liaison statements, you will find it. Right. Thanks. Okay. Great. Thank uh, sorry, you. I, I will try to find it and put it into the notes. 
Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, one quick question. Uh, I, I missed the, the one part of your comment that you were saying that how to generalize chick for media where, where media is not based on what was a point to point because you went then on the mesh, mesh network. Well, yes, chic is, is effectively point to point if you like, but if you operate on any medium between any two points, then you need to establish a session to define who are these points and what is basically the session, the set of rules, etc., between those two points. For instance, if it was big servers, then there could be many sessions between the servers with different set of rules, etc., if it's different applications. So we need Okay. We need to have a concept of a session to identify the, the set of points and where we are in the progress of fragmentation and what is the set of rules being applied and who plays the role of the device and the application, etc. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Please check out the, the notes that I got that correct. But yeah, now I, now I think I understood you. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Further comment or questions? Okay, rats. Kathleen, Nancy, Ned? Before you go to Reds, um, I wasn't quick enough to press unmute on, on the Elwig um, segment. Um, so Elwig is a working group that, that clearly had its heyday <clears throat> five years ago or so. Um, th there are a number of projects that uh, still need to be finished up. Uh, some of them are, are moving uh, because they, they already have uh, left the working group, uh, but the, the working group is uh, not really making a lot of progress at the moment. So I'm wondering uh, whether we maybe need to find a new home uh, for for the re remaining uh, work items that, that uh, still have energy and that, that used to be in uh, Elwick. And I'm wondering whether IoT Ops is the place to do that or uh, we have some some other place to uh, finish this work. Okay, thank you very much, Karsten. Uh, have you talked with Hank about this? Or... No. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, then, further comment questions on Elwi? Yes. Um, yes. Since uh, Karsten brought up this Elwi issue. Um, where to finish? Uh, do you think? I think we could probably have some discussions in this group because um, the other group also falls under IoT Directorate. Is this something we can help by discussing here or uh, asking for people's opinion? In a way, uh, if anyone has any opinion to Karsten's comments, whether it should be um, done elsewhere, and if it is, um, if IoT Ops is the right group. I guess nobody has any comments. So in that case, probably it should be discussed in the LOE group. Okay, I have nothing further. So. Do, do we have an AD that is responsible for this in the meeting today? I must admit I haven't checked who's responsible. <laughs> Sorry. This is the other Eric is responsible for LOE. Okay. Okay, maybe I should ask him first. Mm. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, so we go now to Rats, Kathleen, Nancy, Ned. Okay, someone add some information? Uh, um, I did, this is Dave. Um, Hi, Dave. Uh, so, Michael and I participate in RATS, but neither of us are chairs. We're just document editors on one of the documents. Oh, okay. And so, I filled in basically what's there on the data tracker. Uh, two documents uh, went through uh, calls for adoption recently. One on media types for the entity attestation token and one on uh, 
a format for expressing reference values for use in policies. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't put this in there, but I think the charter milestones were updated to accept the concise T T concise uh, trust anchor stores, if I remember right, because uh, that was one that it wasn't clear whether that was going to go into rats or someplace else, because lots of protocols and working groups need to configure trust anchors for purposes much wider than just attestation. Um, and so I think the AG decided that it was easier to stick it in rats than it was to charter some other group since it wasn't any other natural place. And so I believe that's going to be done in rats as well. Um, so the energy attestation token has gone through a working group last call with discussions on uh, comments there. And then there's at least two documents sitting in the ISG or IFC editor's queue, which is the architecture document, which is the one that Michael and I are editors of. And also the uh, Chara document is in the ISG. So those are the things that I know about. Anything else that I'm forgetting, Michael, that's top of mind? Um, I guess that beat is progressing, but it's so slow. Um, and Rat's architecture is in the RFC editor queue. Did you say that? Uh, I said that it had gone through to the IESG, and so yes, that's a good update that it's in the RFC editor queue. Thank you. And I'll just mention there's some uh, there's some other documents that are depending upon it. Um, there's a cluster. Um, and I think uh, the NetConf key store is probably the document that's going to keep the rest of them up. So um, if people want to go do some reviews of that document, that would probably help other documents in that cluster get through. Well, cool. thanks, Michael. OK, great. Thank you very much, Dave, Michael. Some, comment, uh, some uh, other comment or questions? Okay, Ro, Rick, Eve, or someone else? Yeah, they uh, could not make it, so uh, they asked me to give you an update. Uh, yes. So the most advanced document is the LDAX, which is with uh, the ISG. And I just double checked that there are still a couple of threads on it. So I suppose uh, some comments need to be resolved. The one following it uh, is the use cases, uh, which have been submitted to ISG review, uh, waiting for a uh, write up, actually. And uh, I would say the, the hot topic in, in the working group is the architecture document, which is uh, obviously a, a key document to the group and, uh, and is being developed. There is a very good uh, Draft produced by Pascal, who is on the call, maybe can can add more, but uh, there are comments and some updates are still uh, needed, as I understand. So that's the big piece uh, next step for us. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Janos. Yes, and my only comment to to address uh, Janos is is effectively that uh, I owe and I am really late. I owe a reply to Lou actually on his very good comments and. Uh, I believe that we are very, very close to be uh, fully in agreement. I mean, these comments were really to the point and really good. I just need to formulate uh, my answer correctly, but um, I'm, I'm in line with what he's saying, basically. So we are converging now to um, to what this document should be. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Pascal. Uh, some additional comments or questions? Okay. About uh, role. Uh, we have one uh, hour time slot on Tuesday at the ITF 115. Uh, we have the operation ready. We are working in the Shepherd document right up. Out of the Ripple, we have a new version. We are addressing the last comments. And about the fast border router crash detections is active. Uh, we need reviews and comments on it. So that's it for now for all. Some com uh, additional uh, comment or questions? Okay. Sweet, Dave, David, Ruth, Russ. Uh, yep, I will cover the next two working groups since I don't see two or an NC in here. So, uh, so yeah. Suit is meeting for an hour and a half on Wednesday. Uh, the main uh, document is the manifest uh, specification, 
for doing a software update on devices. Uh, this one recently went through a working group last call and has been addressed in comments, and I expect it will be uh, ready for IESG submission, at least that's the goal. Um, now, uh, previously, meaning before, just before last IETF, the document was previously split into separate documents to have the main document and other parts into extensions. So basically everything that there was still, you know, uh, debate or open issues on was moved to extensions because all of the debate was on things that were not really core. So that the core spec was left to be going to the IESG as soon as possible. Well, uh, work would then continue on things that were less core and the other extension documents. And so most of the working group session, I expect will actually be focusing on the extensions to make progress, given that the manifest spec is uh, just wrapping up. Um, the suit working group has been coordinating with the TEEP working group, which is the next one on the list, which is the first uh, IETF uh, uh, working group that takes a dependency on the suit uh, manifest. Uh, and so that feedback has been incorporated and um, good, com good communication between the two working groups. Any questions on suit before I go on to TEEP? All right, then I will go on to TEEP where I'm an author of, uh, author or co-author, I should say, of the three relevant documents in there. So that's why I will cover them as a co-author on all three of the main documents. Um, TEEP is meeting immediately after SUIT, um, which is convenient since uh, TEEP uses SUIT. So anything that SUIT agrees on can be then discussed in the um, uh, TEEP meeting right afterwards. Sorry, it's, uh, it's I should say right after uh, SUIT, not RAS in the, in the, in the notes. Somebody should fix that. Um, the architecture document is the first of those three that already went to the IESG. Had a number of comments and just waiting for those to be addressed before sending out the call that the approval status since the votes are already in. Um, and so we've been working on addressing those and I expect that architecture document to be updated uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, there's been active um, uh, discussions and fixes on it. Um, so the goal is to get that out uh, probably in the next day or so. And then that one will be uh, probably done since we think that all the ballot comments have been addressed. We've been confirming that with um, the, the various directorate reviews that have uh, submitted those comments. The transport document was technically done a while back, but since it's a normative reference underneath the protocol doc, right? If there's anything changes in the protocol that affects the transport, we've been holding the transport document until the protocol doc was also done. And the protocol doc is transport agnostic, and we have a transport document that's transporting over um, HTTP when the um, uh, device with the trust execution environment um, is the one that might be behind a firewall. And so you need a transport that goes in the outbound direction as opposed to the reverse direction. So that's the initial transport document. Um, that one has had earlier reviews from GenArt and ArtArt. Uh, those have been addressed. And so it will continue along the process as mother directorates file comments. But again, it's expected to go simultaneous with the protocol doc. Protocol doc is where all the actual work is, uh, where we had a great hackathon session last IETF, and I expect we'll have another great hackathon session uh, this time. So we make, made it through, I think, almost all, and by the time that the internet draft link shows up, we will have made it through all the comments um, that have been raised since last time. And so the document is getting pretty stable, and there's multiple implementations, and uh, I think five of the six uh, implementations were present at the hackathon last time, and so looking forward to another great hackathon this time. That's it for TEEP, unless there's any questions. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Dave, for giving uh, feedback on SUITE and TEEP. If there is no further comment questions, we proceed. Okay, with RTF now, Coin, Jeffrey, Eve, Marie Jose. Okay, uh, Ari, Think to see the research group. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> for Think the research, I mean, at least. From my side, it's been a bit slow recently. You know, summer vacations and a bit of sick leave followed by uh, parental leave. So now getting getting back back to speed. But um, we're not gonna meet at this IETF. Um, we're gonna plan for a summer meeting later. Uh, we haven't yet had a chance to plan for the details, but you will be hearing about those soon. Um, we do have a couple of drafts quite late in the stage. One of the IOTH, um, the shepherding, is still to be done and, and push it forward. We're also waiting for some 
final review comments but it seems that those are never never coming but the authors of those those reviews pointed out they're not anything blocking so i guess we can save to go forward and of the rest loyalty draft still pending for last updates before we call research group last call but yeah the the main thing would be the summary meeting happening sometime soon after the 115. Uh, Karsten, anything you want to add here? No, thank you. Okay, thanks. Questions, comments? Moving on. Okay, thank you. Uh, so are you aware of a new plan ITF or RTF activities? No. Okay. So Maybe yeah. worthwhile pointing to the regular IEEE ITF meeting that's happening this evening. Or maybe I'm the wrong <laughs> place yet. Sorry. <laughs> okay, good. That's no, okay. Um, thank you, Karsten. Uh, other IoT words, IoT Security Foundation. Michael, do you have some update? Um, there was a conference two weeks ago, um, and, um, no, I don't have much to say. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then next topic will be, um, um yes. I think this is maybe pause for a mo moment. I think it would be great to hear more from whoever is following work beyond IETF. I mean, I can maybe one, one thing, maybe most of you already noticed. For example, the Matter organization published their 1.0 spec recently, so now it's publicly available. Might might be interesting for a bunch of people working on the IoT, especially on the home area. I can post a link to the uh, notes for those who haven't seen it yet. It would be very interesting to hear from you others, whatever you are following from other organizations. Yeah, um, we 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 should have a conversation somewhere about it now that it's public um i i guess they still they 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 still not using tls and still aren't ha, don't have any algorithm agility um but um i have to read the document to see how it's changed in the last year and a half <clears throat> it's one of those things where you'd wish they'd be successful uh and you know take over the world on the other hand if the the protocol quality is so poor then you kind of wish the opposite right so you said michael they're not using tls is that correct yeah that's um uh, a document a year and a half ago was not using TLS. They reinvented their own own session security layer. Um, it's locked to ECDSA um, 256-bit, and it doesn't appear that a year and a half ago there was no no um, um, there's no guard against a bit down attack, which means that as far as I can tell, the only way to move to a stronger algorithm. Um, is to replace every device the same day. Yeah, I think reinventing is an important keyword that yeah. describes this work. Well, you know, 27 year old brilliant engineers from Google with no sense of history. So that's what happens. Thanks, Sammy. Very very interesting piece of information. Thanks for sharing. Any other news from the industry? Okay, then thanks. Okay, great. And then the next topic um, will be if you have requirements for inter working groups coordination for any draft of review. You can add it. It was mentioned during the meeting, some documents. So if you want to add them. Um, or it's not needed. 
Um, I think maybe the concise TA storage document that I mentioned that's just adopted by rats is actually much more general. And so uh, I expect other working groups would want to be able to review that one. Okay. Will you put the link? The, uh, yeah. I'll look to the doc okay. Thank you. And maybe while you are talking at this, just thinking now, uh, I guess you may be aware of the SNAC, the SUP network auto address auto configuration working group that will be meeting for the first time in London. So it's basically for actually 802.15.4 stuck network to connect to an existing Wi Fi network. So it's really related to IoT. So SNAC without a K. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Uh, Ines, no problem. Yeah. Uh, I will. I need. We need to leave shortly, but I will put a pointer there. So it's basically uh, around matter as well, right? So that's our matter, uh, and I've seen some people talking about matter before. Uh, can connect to a, let's say, a usual network, right? An, an IPv6 network. That meeting is the same meeting that Karsten was pointing to uh, about IEEE? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you could put the pointer, I would be interested in. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, SNAC is a new working group. Uh, the meeting I was pointing to was the regular IETF IEEE coordination meeting that has its 39th meeting this evening, I think. Yeah. And I won't be there, by the way, Gaston, so sorry. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Eric. Very interesting. Uh, some additional comment or questions? Okay, so I will stop the recording now. And uh, 